So uh, just to reintroduce myself, my name is Alex Scott. I'm the branch secretary of the Together branch of the ASU. Um, today, we will be talking about public sector wages across a number of enterprise bargaining agreements, both in terms of health, schools, transport, TAFE, uh, and work cover, as well as a range of our smaller agreements. Before we start, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the lands we'll be meeting across the state today, uh, and also pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. Um, in terms of today's session, we will be trying to limit it to half an hour, um, which is normally the maximum time people can attend these sort of sessions. We know we won't get through every question. Um, we do normally have the chat turned off on these activities um, and we will use a follow-up email to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to get their questions answered. There is also the Q&A function uh, that we will try and get to uh, as we go through today's session. So today's session is designed for uh, our, our together members and workers across the public sector um, to talk about uh, getting fair wages for members uh, in 2022. And what we're wanting to talk about primarily is the issue that we've seen over the last couple of weeks um, that we've all been living over the last few months. And that is that there has been a very significant increase in the cost of living as we move out of COVID. Uh, over the last 10 years, we have been very successful as public sector workers, ensuring that we are able to get wage outcomes um, that have been higher than inflation. While generally across Australia, wages have been stagnating and Australian workers have been going backwards in a range of areas in the private sector because their, their wages haven't kept up with inflation. Um, what we've seen uh, since about 2015 has consistent wage outcomes across the sector, which have been above inflation. Um, but what we're now looking at is a, a, a significant change uh, as we come out of COVID with an increase, dramatic increase in relation to cost of living. We've seen that in terms of CPI, um, but in terms of what that means in terms of the public sector, the question is going to be, as we move into bargaining this year, for most parts of the Queensland public sector, uh, is, is the question about government wages policy. Um, and we've already seen the nurses have started negotiations this year. Their negotiations have been going for a while. Their agreement finished, uh, finalised on the 1st of April. Uh, and the government position for the nurses, as they've indicated for all other parts of the public sector, um, is that they want to maintain a wages policy of 2.5%. And what that means as they enter into bargain by bargain across the sector, um, that they have been, uh, with unions have been able to get two and a half percent plus a range of other things, but the headline figure for bargains over the last couple of years has been two and a half. We did in the last round get a one-off payment of 12.50, a sign-on bonus as it was called at the time. Uh, and that was in addition to the two and a half, but the standard headline figure has remained that. We have had also some members um, because of what happened in the 2012 bargaining round in the core EB, who've had wages that have been slightly in vary varying from the two and a half because they've had award wages as opposed to enterprise bargaining wages. And that's been particularly the issue in relation to our schools members, but also our members in terms of broader in education as well as um, child safety and the core. So their wages have been slightly different. They have been above weight, above the CPI, but the general outcome across the board has been two and a half percent. Then we had a sort of slight further variation to that uh, over the last 12 months in that the government sought to have a wages freeze um, given the collapse of their budget in 2020. Um, that wages freeze ended up uh, being a wage deferral. So originally in 2020, they announced that they wanted to have no wage outcomes for public sector workers. Um, but as part of that process, um, the, the unions and, and workers were able to put enough pressure on them um, to say that rather than having no wage increase at all, what happened was that the wage rise that people were due in 2020 um, ended up being not occurring uh, in the 2020-21 financial year. And then the 21-22 financial year, um, people got two rate pay rises of 2.5%. So that's why, uh, depending on which area you're in, that those, those dates are slightly different. But basically, uh, everybody online today would have got a 2.5% increase in the second half of last year from sometime between July and 31 December. And then in the first half of this financial, this is first half of this calendar year, the second half of the financial year, you would have received a second two and a half percent increase um, either on the 1st of January or, or 1st of March or slightly, um, or maybe slightly later for some of our, our health workers. So in terms of that process, that wages freeze um, ended up still being two and a half percent per year, but it was 5% over two years, zero in the first year and 5% in the second year. So that still means that we are facing 
a significant situation that the standard wage outcome for public sector workers continues to be two and a half percent. Um, and if it's if inflation now is running at 6% in, this, in Brisbane, um, there is no figure for Queensland, but for Brisbane, it's 6%. Nationally, it's 5.1%. Um, the question for us is, if we have a wage outcome that is substantially lower than the inflation figure, uh, what that means is we are going backwards as workers, um, that, that our pro the increase in our wages will not match the increase in cost of living that we are facing. Um, many of us will be facing mortgage increases over the next couple of months as a result of the, the Reserve Bank decision um, this week. Um, that will flow onto most people over the next few months who have non-fixed mortgages. Um, that won't factor into the CPI figure. So changes in mortgage rates won't mean that CPI changes in the future, but, the, but there's certainly likelihood that there is going to be uh, a question about whether CPI has, is a one-off increase as a spike or is it a longer term increase uh, in terms of uh, what that looks like? Um, so in terms of that process, um, what we need to be thinking about um, in a broader sense um, is whether or not as public sector workers, um, we are supportive of a two and a half percent increase um, or whether we think we should be um, campaigning for something uh, different from that. And one of the issues that we have in this process um, uh, is that the wages freeze had some unexpected consequences. Um, and because that, they wanted to have the wage freeze apply to everyone. Um, and so those people who had agreements running from kind of 2020 through to 2023 or 2019 through to 2022, um, they had a 7.5% increase over three years and they lost the middle payment and they got two payments in the final year. But the unintended consequence of that was that there were some agreements that were finalising in 2020 um, and they couldn't have any defer, uh, any pause applied to them because their agreements were finalising. And so in terms of that process, um, what we saw was effectively a number of agreements um, uh, were extended. Uh, and so therefore they got 10% over four years um, rather than 7.5% over three. Um, and that was um, uh, significant in terms of that process and what we've seen uh, as in terms of uh, discussions with members across the state, what we're seeing today is consistent, um, that there is an appetite um, for trying to have a wage increase higher than 2.5% this year. Um, so in terms of bargaining, what that meant in terms of the, the process, so I'm just someone else. What that means in terms of the, the deferral process um, is that, uh, uh, we've now seen a situation where um, uh, rather than having structured bargaining over ba everybody bargaining um, over a two-year period and the public sector being very fragmented in bargaining, what we found in that fragmentation process um, was that it was very difficult to move wages because if we were bargaining second or third or fourth, um, the government would say, well, we can't give you more than 2.5% um, because we've just given some other people 2.5%. So the negotiations um, by their fractured nature made it very difficult for the union movement and public sector workers across the board to move wages. But what happened as a result of, that, and that process meant that we were basically bargaining from about kind of 2020 through to about the end of 2021 and about a two year period. What we've now seen as an unintended consequence of the freeze and the need to extend some agreements to four years has meant now that we have a lining up of agreements in the public sector in a way that we haven't seen in over a decade. So the nurses have been in negotiations um, for a number of months, their agreement finished on the 1st of April. They are being offered 2.5%, uh, and, and the government is saying that. But what we're now seeing over the next little period, of the next few months, um, is that the vast bulk of public sector workers are all going to have their bargains up for renegotiation, where previously they would have been spread over 18 months or two years. Now, effectively, once the nurses, if, if they continue their negotiations, uh, we will now see from July through to about September, October, agreements finishing in August, end of September, a couple in early October. But during this period, we'll then see school teachers, sworn police officers, fire, doctors in, in health, uh, and the white collar parts of transport and main roads, all having their, their agreements finishing on the 30th of, Jan uh, 30th of June. And then we have another range uh, of workers, particularly in terms of members of Together and members of the United Workers Union, um, for all the other workers in schools, uh, other than school teachers, have their agreements uh, finalising in September. 
And that's the first time that together members and who is members will be negotiating uh, in a, effectively in the same time. Uh, last time around, it was the first time schools had left the, the court. But also we'll have all our health members um, outside of our doctors um, also up for negotiation in September, early October. Uh, and that'll be true also of the AWU's membership, uh, the blue collar membership, as well as the UWU membership in terms of health. And we'll also have ambulance officers, work cover, non-teaching TAFE uh, and also Marine Safety in uh, Queensland and a couple of other smaller agreements. Um, so what that means in a real sense um, is that for the first time ever, um, we're able to, um, uh, or first time in 10 years, um, think about whether or not uh, there, there would be the ability to run a campaign around wages um, and run a campaign about wages that is independently of bargaining. So while we might be bargaining in a formal sense, in September, October for many together members. Um, what we'd be suggesting uh, today for consideration by you uh, is that we look at running a separate campaign around wages uh, and looking at doing that um, to avoid the situation we have potentially in September, October, that if we are then negotiating and the government has settled for two and a half percent with the school teachers, with the sworn police, with fire, with nurses, with doctors, it'd be much harder for us to move the two and a half percent at that point in time uh, about whether or not uh, we should be looking at trying to talk about the wages issue before our bargain start in September and October. Um, and in terms of that process, um, also then thinking about um, uh, the, the, the ability, uh, particularly in this process, um, to work through what it might look like in terms of a, um, a combined campaign. Uh, because what this would be significantly is if we were going to attempt this sort of campaign, um, would be thinking about whether or not uh, rather than bargain by bargain, uh, we do this with in conjunction with the other unions, not only in our own bargain, but, by our own, but beyond our own bargaining. So, so talking about working with the nurses, with the school teachers, with sworn police, uh, with firefighters, as well as the together members and UWU members in schools, in hospitals, in transport and main roads, in the MSQ. Um, and in terms of that process, um, what that looks like in terms of a, an activity uh, is something we have done before. Uh, about 15 years ago, uh, prior to the, the global financial crisis, uh, there was a combined wages campaign, uh, which was successful. It did bring together our members in schools, in hospitals, as well as groups across the board. Um, and that campaign, the, 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 the wage balance campaign, was the last time uh, that the union movement was su successful in su changing the headline figure in relation to enterprise bargaining uh, and moved it from the 3.25 that was uh, offered at the time uh, to 4%. And we ended up being a four, four, four and a half wage offer that we got through that, that bargaining campaign. So in terms of that process, we do think um, that there has been some experience about being able to win on these campaigns. Um, but we also know that in terms of that process, um, we aren't alone in this, that this is an issue that is facing uh, uh, unions and workers across the country um, because of the nature of um, uh, that there has been an attempt by governments to seek to have um, uh, wages capped at two and a half percent for the, uh, uh, across the sector uh, for the last 10 years or so. Uh, and so we're now seeing uh, unions and workers in places like New South Wales, in Western Australia and on the Commonwealth can, can, looking at a similar campaign um, to the one that we're considering partly because of the, their circumstances, but also partly that the cost of living that is being faced by workers across the sector uh, across, is, is the same in, uh, in the inflation is higher in Queensland, but it's still running at 5% nationally. So in terms of that process, it, this is something that is, um, that is not unique to Queensland uh, and something that we are looking at doing. So in terms of that process, uh, we also need to work out whether we can win. Uh, we are looking at something that is quite different you know, over the last decade or so. And we know in terms of the ability to, to make a real difference, um, that will only happen if there is enough capacity of workers to get involved in the campaign. So in terms of that, what we've been talking to members about over the last couple of weeks is are they willing to pledge to support the campaign? Because traditionally what we've been working through uh, on a on a bill, on a enterprise by enterprise basis, department by department basis, is we come to you and we say, let's work together, let's try and win on enterprise bargaining. And that'll be happening in September or October. But this time around, what we'd be talking about is potentially campaigning around wages in, um, in June, July, August, and then for those members with agreements later in the, in, in the term, in September, October, having a secondary campaign, uh, a secondary set of negotiations around non-wage issues. Uh, and in terms of that process, we've already had um, over, over, over 1,000, 1,500 members uh, sign up to that pledge. Uh, and that gives us real confidence to say, 
that it is a that the, the people are feeling the pain in relation to, to cost of living, but more importantly, they're willing to do something about it. Um, because it's only if workers are willing to do something about it, to participate in a campaign, that we can uh, run a campaign that will be successful, because it is workers on the ground who win this, not paid union officials. And in terms of that process, we want to make sure, though, before we go to government and say workers are pissed about the issue and they are going to do something unless you move the wages off up, uh, we want to make sure that when we start this campaign, it ends up having membership support and worker support to become successful because it'll be damaging in terms of our negotiations in September and October uh, if we say we're going to campaign in July and no one turns up. Uh, in terms of those processes, that would mean we're actually worse off in terms of forcing the government to give us better outcomes than we would be if we did it. So what we'd be looking at is trying to make sure that people pledge their support so we can have, have confidence talking to the other unions about the fact we think this campaign could be successful, but not more importantly, it's not just myself or Dee or Michael in the union office who think this campaign would be successful, but workers on the ground who are, who are saying they are willing to do something about it. And what that would then probably look, 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 look like in terms of a campaign moving forward would be two sorts of campaigns. First of all, the kind of wages campaign for, for, um, for people who are particularly in health and in uh, schools, uh, wages campaign in June, July, August, and then an enterprise bargaining campaign um, with a predetermined wages outcome, because we, we, whatever we win in July would apply to you, but then having a separate campaign around issues like the allocative model in relation to workloads, in relation to filling the vacancies, those sort of issues would be kind of be later in the year, um, but a second campaign would be early in the year. Um, and then I think also in terms of that separate process, understanding, because we have delegate conferences in May, um, both in education and in health, to work through what our strategies look like. Uh, we'll be talking to delegates uh, and the workplace leaders about where we want to go with this process. And so today and the pledge process is also to work out um, in terms of the delegates making decisions about the strategy. Not only are we looking at the issues in the logs of claim, uh, but we're also looking at the ability to run a campaign more successfully uh, and looking at then uh, have delegates uh, considering and adopting uh, recommendations around what a wages campaign looks like as much as what a bargaining campaign looks like. And I think what that probably means in the medium term is the, the key delegate conferences um, in relation to our health and education members, transport already had theirs, uh, and some of our doctor members already had theirs, but in terms of the, the significant areas of schools and health, uh, their meetings are in mid to late May. Um, and if we're able to um, start that process um, and, and, and we see enough support from, from workers for a wages campaign, um, we would probably be looking at joint report back meetings with other unions in June um, before the bargains finish um, in, uh, expire for school teachers, for doctors, for fire, uh, for our transport members and for, and for our doctor members. Um, so kind of a, a series of workplace meetings um, to talk about working together, to talk about what a wages campaign looks like, uh, to start to discuss with members what they're willing to do in a real sense uh, to try and move the government. Because this is not an issue, easy issue to win. Um, we are talking about a very significant impact on the state budget uh, if we are able to uh, move this. Um, in terms of that process, uh, it will require significant membership involvement, significant membership activity to force government to do something because they would really like to not have to pay more than they have to. Um, while they are committed at one level theoretically to fair wages, um, in terms of people's lived experience about the explosion in prices that we've seen over the last six to 12 months, um, they are going to do everything they can to not have that flow into the wages of public sector workers so it doesn't flow into the state budget. Um, so in terms of that process, the key thing we will be looking at is membership meetings in June, having discussions not only with our own members, um, but also having our members and members from the United Workers Union, from the Teachers Union, from the Police Union, from the firefighters, all coming together and talking through how, how much do we care about the issue, what are we willing to do about the issue, and where do we go to from here. So I think what we've seen um, very clearly is that there is strong support. Um, today, we've seen strong support uh, in relation uh, to the, uh, the pledge, um, and we'll need to continue to try and get people to pledge that campaign in terms of around wages, because we don't get enough pledges. If people aren't willing to do a pledge, they're not going to be willing to do something else. And so therefore, uh, if we have a level of apathy that shows no one really cares about wages, no one will sign the pledge. And so therefore, we're better off going to the traditional enterprise bargaining approach, and everybody will just end up with 2.5%. 
Um, but if we can get enough people involved, get enough people to understand um, that there is something they can do about it, because people all know that they are paying more for their groceries every week, that they know it's that much harder to make ends meet. Um, what we need to know is, are they, is that an issue big enough for them to do something to try and force an outcome? So that's really then going to be um, what we're seeing, strong support for, for, for those meetings in relation to June. Um, and then I think what, what we'll really be talking about at that June meeting uh, then is thinking through uh, how do we win? Uh, and I think what we know is in terms of what it took to win 15 years ago um, and what it takes to win now is basically the same issue. The same issue is going to have to be about whether or not public sector workers can come together despite their differences, despite the issues that we sometimes have in workplaces between different professions um, and say that we all have a common issue. And our common issue is that prices are going up. Cost of living is going up. And we are seeing that it is harder and harder to make ends meet. Um, what we need, the only solution available for us in a real sense is for our wages to increase in line, uh, uh, in, in relation to in line with price increases. And that we know that two and a half percent, we will go backwards this year. Um, the question for us moving forward as a public sector workforce is do, are we able to get together in a way that can put enough pressure with a combined workforce across all unions, across all agencies to deliver a higher outcome than two and a half percent and change wages policy as well as changing our lives through enterprise bargaining. That has been successful in the past. We did it 15 years ago in relation to the wage balance campaign where unions came together, came together and made a real difference. Um, the challenge for us now, uh, working over the next couple of months, um, is clearly trying to put together a structure of campaign work um, that will actually deliver uh, enough pressure on the government. And that also then means understanding on a department by department basis, sort of workplace by workplace basis, um, how angry workers are and working out what will be successful. Because the challenge about winning this campaign is making sure that workers get involved, that they, get, they, take, they participate in the action. And so that action has to be driven, the decisions about what action to, is, has to be taken has to be driven by members at the workplace level as well. And that's what we're looking for, for workplace contacts is to make sure that members control this campaign, that they are decision, key decision makers in relation to what we do how we do it and whether that will be successful in moving the employer. So hopefully uh, we will be able to build that process and we've got a lot of support there already in relation to looking at trying to get contacts, but without that involvement, um, the, the chances are the campaign will not necessarily affect what we need to in schools, which might be different to what we need to in hospitals, which might be different to what we need to in customer service centers and transport. So we need that level of engagement, not only in our activities, but the planning of our activities and the design of the campaign and understanding how we can use our power as workers to, to win. So uh, that's really what we're looking at over, the, over the, um, this process. What we'll try and do is maximise our communication processes. We've had an overwhelming response to today's Zoom. Uh, I know it's not always possible to get one which exactly matches people's um, capacity to attend, whether it's lunch times or other things, depending on schools versus hospitals versus customer service centres. Uh, but we have been overwhelmed by the number of people participating in this process. We're certainly getting really good results in relation to those pledges, but we do need more pledges to make sure that we can go to our delegate conferences in, in, in mid-May and late May and say to our delegates, as well as to other unions, that together members, together workers, really want to make sure this campaign make, make, makes the to challenges the 2.5% and make sure we end up with a wage increase. Um, that means we don't go backwards this year and don't go backwards for the next three years in terms of enterprise bargaining. Um, so in terms of that process, um, if you can get involved, first of all, make sure you sign the pledge. Um, if you have signed the pledge already, talk to your fellow workers about signing the pledge as well. Um, and if you're able to become a, talk to your local union organiser about becoming a, a workplace contact and seeing whether we can then uh, make sure that we, as we move into June, we can plan activities for the first round of joint union activities um, that are most likely to allow you and your work colleagues in, the, in, your, in, your, in your hospital, in your school, in your customer service centre, the opportunity to get involved, but also to make sure this campaign reflects our members in work colour and in TAFE, as well as our bigger employers. And that way we can have that combined strength that we will need if we're gonna, get, gonna, gonna make a real difference. But certainly we've done it in the past. We've been able to do it um, in terms of working together with other unions. It is difficult. It is a bit of a challenge, um, but we do know if we do nothing, we are going to go backwards. 
If we do nothing, we will end up with 2.5% and inflation at 6%. And that's going to make every worker's life more difficult. It will mean it's that much more difficult to make ends meet. And as that happens, we will have to stop doing things in our, in our, work, in our non-working lives as we try and save money to make ends meet. And that's really our opportunity this year, given the wages freeze, is a unique opportunity to challenge wages policy. I think the only, the only thing stopping us is whether or not we can get enough workers involved, um, because clearly everybody has a same lived experience. Prices are going up much more than 2.5%. The challenge for us as a, as a workforce is to work out, can we come together to collectively to make a difference and to do actions that will force our employer to give us a wage increase this year? That means we don't go backwards. So thanks everybody for your time. Uh, thanks for participating. Um, but it's really going to be up to you and your colleagues over the next three to six months uh, as to whether or not this campaign will have enough momentum, will it have enough strength to make the difference it needs to if we're not going to go backwards this year. So thank you very much. There will be an email coming out after today asking for feedback about how you think this Zoom went, but also asking you if you have other questions in relation to how you can get involved or in relation to specifics of the campaign. Um, and there'll also be other emails coming out over the next week, particularly uh, talking about the issues beyond wages, which you already would have seen in relation to the log of claims for the non-wage component of your bargaining in the second half of the year. So thanks very much for your time. We do want to keep it to half an hour um, so to make sure that people can, can participate in these things regularly knowing they're not going to lo have to leave halfway through. So thanks, everybody. Uh, and please make sure you give feedback to us about today's Zoom. And if you use that opportunity to also raise other questions you have about how you get involved, what the campaign can look like, or issues and uh, issues outside of wages that you think we need to be talking about uh, locally in terms of your particular bargains later in the year.